Hello, I'm David Speedy, Senior Fellow at the Carnegie Council. This year we're asking you to make a generous contribution to our 2010 Spring Fund Drive. To donate, please click on the pause button. You will be instructed how to make your contribution and then return to this video. Thank you for your support for the Voice of Ethics and International Affairs. Initially, monotheism actually is this kind of expression of, of, in, uh, of, of it's an expression of intolerance of other gods that, that, that is grounded in a perception of enmity with these other nations. And it's not, the Israelites aren't imagining it. They've had a very, they live in a bad neighborhood and they have had some, some very uh, bad interactions with another, a lot of nations culminating in the disaster of the exile. Um, so I would say that, that monotheism was in that sense born as a fundamentally intolerant thing, but uh, it can change, and, and I do chart how uh, readily it can change and, 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 and try to show the emergence of, of a monotheistic God of tolerance and broader compassion. And I'm not referring, as some Christians might think, I'm not referring to the New Testament. I mean, the New Testament has a lot of that, but I'm not saying that you have to wait until Christianity to get a tolerant monotheism. I argue that right after the exile, okay, you know, the, 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 the Jews are returned from Babylon. What happens is, you know, the Babylonians have conquered and humiliated the Israelites. They've, they've, they've taken all the elites, the educated Israelites, and brought them to Babylon. Um, and then the Babylonians are conquered by the Persians. And Cyrus the Great seems to be a more enlightened imperialist who realizes that, you know, you can get along with your subjects, you know, it, it maybe is easier to, to, to handle your various subjects by, by giving them some autonomy, letting them worship their religion. He returns the Jews to Israel, lets them worship their religion. Um, and I argue that, that if, the, if the kind of mainstream dating of biblical texts is to be trusted, although there, it's a very contentious field how you date biblical texts, but if the mainstream views are to be trusted, I argue that you can see right in texts written right after the exile a different kind of God that's different from the God at the birth of, uh, at, at the birth of monotheism. There are a few examples. Um, I mean, one is just the, the, the book of Ruth. Uh, uh, I don't know how many of you know your book of Ruth, but <clears throat> the whole upshot of the book of Ruth is, 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 the, is kind of, in a way, the revelation that there is Moabite blood running in, in, um, in the Israelite family because a Moabite was an ancestor of King David's. That's kind of the upshot of the book. And, and if you look at pre-exilic texts, the Moabites are the enemies. They're these horrible people you would never want in your family. Mm -hmm.